Today, a step-by-step guide to setting up the ICOM 705 with Build-A-Pie. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Let me show you guys a couple of commands that's good to know regardless of what radio you're using. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal window and the first command I want to run is ls forward slash dev forward slash serial forward slash uh, by hyphen id. Go ahead and press return. This will tell you any of the USB devices that are connected to your system. So right now I only have the 705 connected and you'll see that it generates two different connection points. The first one here we will be using to set up cat control for the radio and this second one here is what we're going to use with the USB or to get the USB data out of the 705 and into the Raspberry Pi. Now let me just quickly connect another GPS unit to the Pi and show you the difference when we get that second device connected. Now, if we run that same command again, you'll see a new device has been connected. And this is that second GPS device that I connected just a second ago. We don't need it for this video. I just wanted to show you how you can find different USB devices connected to your Pi. Now, the second command that's helpful to know is a record space hyphen L. If we press return there, that's going to give us the USB audio codec. That's the sound card that's built into the 705. And the information we're specifically looking for here is to know that it's on card 3 and device 0. You'll see how that information comes into play a little bit later, but just two commands that you really need to know when you start setting up a Raspberry Pi or any Linux system. So let's go ahead and tell you what, we'll just minimize that terminal window. The first thing you always want to do if your radio will allow it is rig control. So I'm going to come down to ham radio and we're going to go ahead and start FL rig. Now, as soon as you start it, you're going to see these messages that the transceiver is not responding. That's okay. That's to be expected because we haven't set anything up yet. Inside of FL rig, let's go ahead and press config setup transceiver. The first thing we want to do is choose our rig from this top drop down box and the next thing we want to do is choose this port right here. So when I open this up you'll see right here we've got those same two listings that we saw in the terminal a while ago. If I slide just a little bit to the right you'll see the IF00 and IF02. 00, remember, is the one we want to use for cat control. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. I'm going to leave everything else at default. Typically, you don't have to change any of these, uh, these settings when you first set it up, unless you've changed something on your radio like the baud rate. Let's go ahead and press initialize. And that completes the configuration for FL rigs. We can go ahead and get rid of this config window. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to close out these extra controls and just minimize FL rig. Now, let's go ahead and configure uh, WSJTX and JS8 call. These two are going to be very similar. So I'm going to open up WSJTX first and show you guys how simple it is to get this configured. From the main screen on WSJTX, go ahead and click on File and come down to Settings. On the first screen, let's give it our call sign right up here at the top, followed by your grid square. Next, we're going to click on the radio tab. And for the rig, we're going to tell it, because we configured everything in FL rig, we're going to tell WSJTX that we're using FL rig. So we just need to scroll down here until we find the FL rig, FL rig selection. You'll see it right there. We'll go ahead and choose it. And we need to change the PTT method to CAT for the 705. For the mode, we want to choose data and packet. And split operation, I typically use fake it. Let's go ahead and click the test CAT button. Oh, I forgot. We need to choose the sound card as well before we can actually test the CAT. So go ahead and click on the audio tab right here. And under input, let's go ahead and click on that. 
and let's come down to this selection here, ALSA Input USB Burr Brown. And you'll see that audio codec in the name of this one again. So let's go ahead and choose that one. And then for output, we're going to scroll down to the bottom and grab this one here, ALSA Output USB Burr Brown. We'll go ahead and select those. Now let's jump back over to the radio tab and see if the CAT test will work. And it does. Our button turns green. Now we can go ahead and test the PTT on the rig as well. So press this button, watch your rig, make sure that it's going into transmit. Mine does, so we're good to go. We can go ahead and click OK here, and WSJTX is configured. So now let's take a look at JSA Call. It is very, very similar to uh, WSJTX. Again, we're going to give it our call sign and our grid square. Let's click on the radio tab. Just like before, when we select rig right here, we're going to choose FL rig, FL rig. Our PTT method is cat. Our mode is data and packet. And again, I'm going to use fake it right here for split operation. Now let's go ahead and click on the audio tab. And this time, this one has actually pulled in our data for us. But if it doesn't, we're going to make the same selections that we did in WSJTX. Back on the radio tab, let's go ahead and click the Test Cat button. And that one should go green. Again, we can test the PTT and verify that it is working. Mine looks good, so that completes setup for JSA Call. Now let's take a quick look at WinLink. So to do that, we're going to open up PAT menu, and I'm going to come down here to Settings and Config, and then I'm going to click on Current Config Settings. In this window, I'm going to change rig control from No to Yes. Now, one thing I want to point out right here, you see this plug HW 3,0? Well, that's that sound card number that I showed you guys a few minutes ago. So looking back at the terminal window we had open, you'll see that card 3 and device 0 again. That's where that information comes into play is right here under this RDOC command. And that tells us that we're using the 705's sound card. Now we should be able to leave everything else here at default. And right here for the HF mode for radio, in quotation marks, I'm going to put PKT. USB space 3000 and go ahead and use the closing quotation marks. And it looks like I missed a letter right there. Let's add that USB in there. If you want to know how I found this information, I'll leave a link to another video that I did that walks through this in detail and shows you how to pick up the information that you need to plug into these boxes. The rest of this we can leave as is. If you want a warning message when you open Pat Menu, you can set that here by choosing yes and then typing in your warning message. But for now, we'll just go ahead and click update. And we can head all the way back out to the main menu. Now that will take care of configuring the RDOP modems. We still need to configure Direwolf if you want to do packet WinLink connections, and we need to configure the VARA HF and VARA FM modems. So let's go ahead and tackle Direwolf first. I have opened up the file browser, and in the main window that you see right here, you should have a direwolf.conf file if you installed Direwolf. I'm going to right-click on that and come down and say Text Editor. After this loads, if you don't have line numbers over here, you can come up to View and then choose Line Numbers, and that'll give you line numbers inside of your text editor. Let's go ahead and start scrolling down, and roughly on line 186, you're going to see this command, this PTT space rig to localhost colon 4532. We want to remove this pound sign right in front of that. And that just tells Direwolf to use FL Rig to handle the PTT of the radio. We can go ahead and press Control S on this and close out of this file. We're done configuring Direwolf. Next up, we need to configure the Vara HF modem. Now, the way I got this to open is I just went over to the Pi menu, came down to Ham Radio, Vara, and clicked on Vara right here. And that brings us into 
the Vara HF modem. Let's go ahead and click on settings right here. And the first thing we'll take a look at is Vara setup. If you've got a registration key, you would enter your call sign here and your registration key here. Everything else you can leave as default. And guys, I would encourage you to go ahead and buy a copy or buy the registration key for Vara. It's a huge speed boost if you work with Winlink and Vara on a regular basis. So after you've put this information in here, go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back up to settings and let's click on the sound card. Now we need to set both our input and output device. So we'll go ahead and click the drop down for the input and let's select USB audio codec. And we're going to select the same thing here for the output. We'll go ahead and choose it and click close. And that's it. We now have Vora HF configured. Let's go ahead and get Vora FM next. Vora FM is similar in many ways to Vara HF, so if we click the settings here, you would click on Vara Setup and go ahead and enter your call sign and your registration key. The next one down is Sound Card, so let's go ahead and click on that. Again, just like before, we're going to choose the USB audio codec. Once we've got that chosen, we can click Close right here. There is one more setting in Vara FM, so let's go ahead and click on that and choose PTT. In this particular setup, I'm going to leave this set to Vox, even though it's not intuitive to do so in this particular setup. But let's leave this set to Vox. The reason is, is Pat is going to handle the PTT for us, and the Vara modem doesn't have to do it. So, we'll leave that set at Vox, and let's go ahead and click Close. And that should take care of our setup for Vara FM. So I'm going to close out of that and we'll run a quick test here with Pat Menu. Inside of Pat Menu from the main screen, I'm going to click the Start Stop Modems button. And then I am going to start a Vara FM connection. So we'll use this Start Vara FM Modem Beta. Go ahead and click on that and wait for everything to start up. Now, let me show you guys a couple of things. Everything has loaded here. I'm going to move the modem over to this side for the moment. As everything is starting up, you're going to get this dialog box from Pat Menu that tells you the Vara modem has started in just a few more seconds. You can simply click OK right there. In your Pat Mailbox, go ahead and choose Allow when it asks if you want to show notifications. That'll just give you a little uh, pop-up notice anytime a new message is received. Now, let me try to make this window a little bit bigger. And hopefully that'll be a little bit more readable for you guys. Look right down here at the bottom where it says My Rig Ready, and it gives me the dial frequency that I'm currently on. We can compare that to FL Rig, and you'll see that we're on 145.020, and that's exactly what the PAT inbox is reporting. So we should be good to make a connection. I'm going to minimize FL Rig, get it out of the way, and go ahead and click on the Ready button here. Let's choose Vara FM for our transport mode, and then I'm going to click Show RMS List. If we scroll down, we should see that list. So I'm going to choose WC4EOC-8, and then scroll back up. You'll notice that it has populated all of the data for us. Also, notice right here that 145.050 is entered into the frequency, and this box is green, indicating that we've got good rig control. Let's go ahead and try to make this connection. And it looks like that is going to complete. Well, it actually won't complete for a couple of reasons. Main reason is I've plugged the wrong password into this box. So it's going to give me that warning here in just a second. Also, I don't have my registration code plugged in. It will work without the registration code, so you can download it and try it. But again, you'll get faster speeds if you purchase the registration code. So let's go ahead and just close out of that because we don't need it. But you can see that it did attempt to make that connection and that it gave me this warning here that the password uh, is incorrect. So I just put my wrong WinLink password into all of my test boxes and that's why we're getting this failure. 
if I updated the password for WinLink, all of this would go through without any issues. Once you're done making this connection, we can just go ahead and say stop modems. The last thing we need to do is go ahead and configure the GPS uh, for the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to come up to the Pi's main menu, come down to Accessories, and I'm going to utilize the GPS Update tool. So if you install the GPS software with build a Pi, also make sure you check that GPS Update tool. It's super helpful and makes it quick and easy to update your GPS device. Once the update tool loads, I'm going to choose USB for the type and go ahead and click continue. It's going to tell me to connect my GPS, so that's already connected, so I'm going to click continue. Now, again, this goes right back to the very beginning of this video when I showed you guys that command uh, where we listed out the dev serial by ID directory. Here's the IF00 that we're using for cat control. If we click the drop down box, you'll see the IF02 that we need to use for GPS. So we'll go ahead and click on that and click OK. It'll tell us that the GPS has been updated. So I'm going to click exit right there and let's open a terminal window once again. This time I'm going to run C GPS and press return and you should see all of your GPS data populate in this box. Your lat, your long, your grid square, your time, all of the data. Go ahead and press Q to get out of this and it will take it two or three minutes for this no GPS to change in Conky and go ahead and display your grid square. Once you get your grid square up here in Conky, you'll know that everything is working correctly. And that should cover all of the basics for configuring your ICOM 705 with build a -Pi. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.